Hey everybody, and welcome back to Millennial Gameplay. Last time on Final Fantasy XII, The Zodiac Age, we crossed to the Osmoan Plain and had a great time doing it. I'm sure everybody enjoyed it. It was just peachy. And now, and then we reached the Gareth uh, homelands, Jahara. Now we're going to take that free chocobo ride that we were offered from the War Chief. And this is the first time we've ever ridden a chocobo, so we get to finally enjoy the Final Fantasy chocobo thing. So the thing about chocobos is, you can't open chests or fight enemies, but enemies can't attack you, and you can actually reach areas you wouldn't otherwise be able to access. And you can check your map at any time, see what's going on. I did not remember to buy the map beforehand. We noticed some Imperials here blocking the way, and why bother killing them whenever we've murdered literally everybody that we've ever seen that is Imperial, uh, short of Larsa. And anytime you ride on a chocobo, you can press X to sprint exactly three times. It's great from getting to point A to point B. I guess this one was a success. Wow, I'm impressed, Bon. I got a good feeling. An alliance between way. Dalmasca and the Empire. Reason tells me tis the only course. We must avoid a wasting war with the Empire at all cost. Yet I fear I could not bear the shame, had I but the strength. A shame, perhaps, for me and for you. But for Dalmasca, tis hope. And you can just accept this, can you? After Vane's ruse, I had abandoned hope for honor. Yet, never did I forget my nightly vows. If I could protect but one person from war's horror, then I would bear any shame. I would bear it proudly. I could not defend my home. What is shame to me? My people hate the Empire. They will not accept this. There is hope. Right? Don't encourage Hope for a future where we can join hands bad, as brothers. <laughs> Larsa, please. This is serious. Uh, oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. Don't be Larsa. Somebody's got to put him in his place. The Senate may play at intrigue, but Lord Vane is not one to be brought down easily. The entire military waits upon his orders, from the War Council down to the rank and file. What better blade than he to strike down the enemies of the Empire? Your Honor reminds me of Zet two years since. He, too, put his trust in Lord Vane's strength, and what became of him? Gone without a trace since Napodis. I will not hear you malign Judge Sect. He was a noble warrior. Or do you think his trust in Lord Vane ill-placed? Vane took two of his own brother's lives. He is ruthless beyond contempt. Ruthless, you say? Would he were more so? He gives traitors no quarter, be they of his own blood. How fitting for one who would bear the burden of empire. But could we bear him? Zagabath, what of you? Surely you do not believe his brothers were traitors? So found his excellency, Lord Gramis. You would do well to mind your tongue, Drace. That matter is long past. Your honors, a summons. Lord Vane has arrived at the palace. We come at once.
Lord Larsa has left for Boromises. He hopes to enlist the aid of the Grand Cutius in stopping the insurgents. I doubt this will be enough to deter Ondor, but even a slight hindrance to his operations would be welcome. This will delay the Rosarian invasion, and we will have bought much needed time to shore up our defenses. Just as His Excellency had hoped. No matter the result, I'm pleased with the young Lord's progress. I can already see the stunned faces of those mud-witted senators. The fools think a child emperor's strings easy to pull from the shadows. But they will find that Lord Larsa is no puppet. Yes, the senators would be most pleased with a puppet for an emperor. Recall, Drace, how the Senate fears and despises Lord Vane's ability. When they realize the truth, that Lord Larsa is no docile lamb to be shepherded, they will bare their teeth and devour him. You are right. I shall speak on this matter with His Excellency at once. Gabranth, it falls to us to protect Lord Larsa. Are we agreed? Aye. And now back to cheer your matters. <laughs> Alright, let's get off the chocobo. The chocobro. Having a little nap? Yeah. We tried passing through Goldmore Jungle, but we encountered some sort of barrier and could go no further. There must be a way through. And there is. Goldmore Jungle. It is such a lovely place. And like right after you get through the Osmone Plains... Oh, I forgot to turn off his uh, Steel Gambit. I did do a bit of off-screen uh, grinding to uh, get everybody to a bit of a closer uh, level to the enemies. Not much, but some, like our equipment was subpar to say the least and Vaughn finally started using axes and hammers a uh, great form of weaponry a uh, bit of a wild card as far as damage goes it can either do a very small amount of damage or uh, like it can do one of three things little damage moderate damage or a ton of damage all right stone gaze is a bit uh, brutal uh, let's put up Vaughn. Pull out Spalthier. Do I have any gold needles? I have seven. the greatest enemy in all of Final Fantasy. My personal favorite is the Maldoro. It's renowned for being a file of New Kai Sand. I've never seen that before. It's known for its uh, special move, Bad Breath, that gives all of your characters a ton of status effects. I think it might have something to do with the fact that I'm killing them with Ash's arrow. Speaking of which, uh, looks like everybody else other than Balthier and Fran are uh, already 18, so I'll keep Ash out. There we go. A nice map of Goldmore Jungle. Shows you everything you need to know. Sort of. Goldmore Jungle is definitely one of my favorite designed dungeons. I'm, I'm considering Goldmore Jungle a dungeon. And not like one of those field areas like, um, 
you know, the Giza planes or uh, Osmo planes. Because honestly, it is like it's very thin hallway esque. It's not like as far as exploration goes, though. It's got a lot of corners and such, and you can take as many turns as you need to get to where you gotta go. Oh. Oh my. Let's try and steal from it, actually. Uh. There we go. Nice. Alright. Now let's show this panther over here who's boss for trying to show me up. Alright, let's put Ash away because she's out of MP anyway. Um. Bosh. Oh yeah, we we're headed down. We got a little disoriented there. Alright. Now let's just keep Fran out as well. And there's the magic wall that that guy was talking about. Or at least one of them. Can't quite pass through. So, we have to find a different way. Yeah, let's get the fuck away from those. <laughs> I am not dying right now. Like, panthers are one thing, hellhounds are... A different monster entirely. And now I wish I still had some MP for Ash. She can take these things down like it's nobody's business. I think they're weak to wind or fire, I can't remember which. They may be weak to both, actually. And there's another magic wall. What is it? The jungle denies us our passage. What have we done? We? No. I. What's that mean? How are we supposed to get through that? 
Making an appearance? Come on, I'm talking over here. I thought you'd left for good. Hey! Our choices are few. Friend? Both here! This is as much for you oh. as it is me. Oh? You are ill at ease. The Nethersite troubles you. You've let your eyes betray your heart. Right. What are you doing? <sighs> Soon you will learn. We go to seek aid of the Viera who dwell ahead. I bet they'll be glad to see you after so long. I am unwelcome, an unsought guest in their wood. In the village ahead, you will find her, Mjern. Bring her to me. She will know why you call her. And welcome to the Playboy Jungle. <laughs> This is where all Playboy bunnies are born. Honestly, if it wasn't for this village, I'd probably say that my favorite was the, uh, Gareth village. But no, the vi <laughs> the Vera village holds a special place in my boner. I mean, my heart. You walk a hidden enclave of the Vera, known to outlanders as Herut village. We wish no consort others. Leave us. They're very exclusive here. Like, they've got their own problems, they don't need- they're a bunch of independent bunny women who don't need a man. Which goes to question, how do they breed? And the first person to say, like rabbits, I'll shake your hand. But I mean specifically, like, I don't... Th uh, are they magically made by the woods themselves, or... What? Hey. Mjern lives here, doesn't she? We're here to see her. You will leave at once. It is not allowed for humans to walk on these grounds. We'll go as soon as we've seen Mjern. If you can find her. We're not leaving until you let us see her. Hmm. Fine then. We'll look for her ourselves. Ah. I've heard the voice of the wood. She says Mjern is not in the village. Jote, where has she gone? Why do you ask? The wood tells us where she has gone. Or can you not hear her? 
You cannot. Your ears are dull from hearing their harsh speech, I think. Viera who have abandoned the wood are Viera no longer. Mjörn too has left her embrace. And you forsake them in turn? It is the will of the village. Viera must live always with the wood. So is the green word, and so is our law. We'll let you worry about keeping your laws. Just do us a favor and stay out of our way. We'll find her ourselves. Our sister has left the wood and gone west. She wanders warrens among men who hide themselves in clothes of cold iron. Thus to me has the wood spoken. The Viera may begin as part of the wood, but the wood is not the only end we may choose. The same words I heard fifty years ago. Man, you just gotta love it whenever audio desyncs with video in the middle of a cutscene and you can do nothing about it. Either way, that little desynchronization ain't gonna hold me down because I choose to end the video right here. See you guys next time.